If you are looking for a job or you are looking for new business, you can say my favorite four words when networking. Keep me in mind. Oh, hey, 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 hey. This is Sarah Noel Block, and you are listening to Tiny Marketing. Have you ever been to a networking event and you did not know what to say? You just sat in a corner questioning, I don't know, your existence. <laughs> or maybe you thought, I want to reconnect with coworker Y, but I wouldn't know how to do that because that was we worked together five years ago. What should I say? Or I went to this awesome event and met a great group of girls and I wish I kept in touch with them. What do I do now in order to re-engage with them and, you know, just see if they're going to go to the next event? Those are the topics we're talking about today. I recently chatted with Jenna Kimball, who is an expert at networking. So here are some things that you're going to learn today. Easy ways to keep and remember the contacts that you have in your world and make it a game so it's fun. How to create scripts or prompts in order to network better and how to re-engage your old, your old coworkers, your old friends within the business world. And last how to maintain those relationships after the networking event is over. So we're touching on a whole bunch of good stuff today. And, oh, I don't want to forget to tell you, Jenna is my guest expert for an upcoming workshop that I'll be emceeing. It is April 23rd at 1.30 p.m. Central Time. If you sign up for it, you'll also get the replay. So don't forget. To sign up, the link will be in the show notes, but she is going to teach you exactly how to network without being awkward, and we'll have some games involved. She is so much fun. You're going to love it. So make sure to pause this right now and sign up for that workshop. You don't want to miss it. Okay, before we get into the conversation with Jenna, let's hear from my first sponsor of the, the J Planable. Hey there, fellow marketers. Before we dive back into the conversation, I've got a game changer for your content strategy. Imagine a world where the headache of coordinating, reviewing, and approving content for social media, blogs, and newsletters just disappears. Struggling with team collaboration on content? We've all been there, and it's precisely why you need to hear about this tool. Its name, Planable. Planable is revolutionizing the way teams collaborate on content. Picture this, crafting and seeing your posts exactly as they'll appear live across different platforms all from one dashboard. Yes, please. The beauty of Planable, it drastically cuts down the approval time for your posts. What used to take hours can now be wrapped up in minutes. Whether you call Planable your unfair advantage or secret weapon in your content creation toolbox, it's changing the content collaboration game. With its beautifully designed interface, you'll wonder how you ever did content planning without it. Ready to upgrade and streamline your approach to content creation? Head over to Planable.io and sign up for a free plan today. That's Planable.io. And here's the cherry on top. Planable is giving you 30% off for the first three months when you upgrade to any plan that fits your needs. That's right any plan. All you need to do is use the code PLANABLE30. That's P-L-A-N-A-B-L-E-3-0 at checkout. And you're ready and all set to transform the way you manage your marketing content. Mm -mm -mm. That's PLANABLE30 to lock in your 30% discount for three months. Yes. Hi, my name is Jenna Kimball. I am a recruiter at a marketing and advertising agency called Dentsu International. And I also help people learn how to interview and be their best selves and help them navigate this crazy job market. Yeah, you kill it at that. We met at an American Marketing Association event. We were both speakers at it and we 
bonded instantly. And I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm not always like that. (laughs) You're clearly good at networking because we just met for the first time that day. and We're like, it was so funny. My husband came because I was like, come to my thing, you know? And then he's like, you and my girl, we're like really buddies. I'm like, I know. He's like, did you know her? I said, no, I just met her today. Yeah. Just a good vibe. Crazy other <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I know. So that's what we're digging into today. We're talking about how to network without being awkward. This is part of a, a series of podcast episodes on this topic because I hear this question a lot. Like, I feel uncomfortable networking. I'm worried that they think that I'm just trying to sell them. But you have some great tips to just like pull out of your toolbox (laughs) to make it so much easier. But more importantly, how to maintain that relationship after the fact. Because, you know, if you grab a card and then walk away and never talk to them again, it was kind of pointless, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, we can certainly get into that. I want to just flip to like limited beliefs because I used to have this, too. I used to be a really shy kid. And I would think what you just said, you know, like, oh, no one wants to hear from me. I'm not interesting. Nobody cares what I have to say. And I just want everyone who's listening to feel like, let's flip that. Like, what if people really thought what you had was interesting to say? What if people really wanted to talk to you? Like, just you have to go into a networking event, conversation, scenario with that mindset or else, you know, you're not going to really do your best. And it it also shows such an ease when you can believe that about yourself. Just like, hey, I'm about to go into this event. I can't wait to meet people. I can't wait to learn about others. I'm sure people are going to have questions for me, too. And it's going to be a really fun. event. So I hope that people can just flip it. I agree. I didn't. I would have never pictured you as a shy kid. I was too. Like, constantly people like you're blushing I'm like that's just because you're looking at me <laughs> so just, I existed I was so shy but also what a relief you know when people come up to you at these networking events you know sometimes you might feel awkward approaching a group or you know jumping into a conversations that that's already in the middle of it. yeah but when you do that people are so relieved because I think a lot of people are like that they're like oh gosh what am I gonna say when I get there oh no isn't it such a relief when someone takes you by the hand and is like, hey, I really want to know more about what you're doing or what you're looking for? Yes. So, yeah. And right there is a good point in that you're asking questions about them. So you're kind of guiding the conversation and letting them tell their stories. So it doesn't, it, it feels less awkward for them because they're being asked <laughs> to tell their story. Yeah. And it's something that they know the most about that everyone in that room out of anyone, you know, the most about your unique story. I'm not asking you to explain quantum physics to me. You know, you, I'm just telling I'm just asking you to tell me about what you're doing that day. So I think it's these low risk questions. It puts people at ease. Speaking of when we went out to breakfast a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned yeah. making it a game. So can you explain yeah. how people can do that? Yes. So I'm I'm a huge game show fan. I have to give myself like numbers and make it a, a challenge for myself. <laughs> so when I say go to going to a networking event, or even if you're networking on the job search or after you've gone to an event, you can use this at any phase of the networking process, which is like for the rest of your life, pretty much really networking. But I say if you're at an event, you can Let's see how many people are there. If there's 20 people, just say, I am not going to leave until I talk to three people or I am going to spend 30 minutes here and I am not going to sit in the corner. I'm going to sit in that middle table or I'm going to walk up to the front. You have to give yourself a challenge. And that's why I say make it. It can be either a numbers challenge or it can be something that scares you, like walking to the front of the room. Or I think, too, even making it a game is like, could I volunteer? If I volunteer, if I check someone in, how many people can I talk to after I did? So just putting numbers behind it or giving yourself a scary challenge. That's so fun. And I I create those little games for myself, too, like for BizDev, for example. Like, I know the percentage of people I have to have conversations with to meet my sales goals. So I make it a game. This is how many people I have to talk to this week. Mm -hmm. If it's 20 per week, that's five per this for, you know, yeah, all of that. You just kind of keep it going. And I think it's the same when we talk about how to re-engage your existing work. 
write down, I know this sounds crazy, but write down every single person that you've worked with and, you know, like not the one that you met that one time, but that you've actually worked with over the years and that they would know your name, they would recognize you and just put it, just put a list. And if you want to re-engage your network, your existing network, just go and however many, I mean, that could be a hundred, that could be 20. I don't know how long you've been working or how many people you've worked with. So you have to kind of make it customized That's to your experience. Goal. Yeah. Well, let's say for me, I mean, I've been working for like 15 years, so I probably could think of quickly 50 people. So if you want to re-engage all those 50 people, make it a game. And you can say, hey, over the next 10 weeks, I'm going to reach out to five per week. And you just put a list and you can even make a spreadsheet. That's another form of making a game, I guess. And you can put everyone's name on a spreadsheet. I know it maybe sounds, takes some of the authenticity out, but I kind of just think it's good record keeping. So you can say, okay, I met this person this day, or I worked with them at this company. Here's the last date of the last time I talked to them. And then any kind of special notes, like if you know um, they have some kind of hobby or their family, something about their family or their kids' names, or they have a dog, any kind of detail. Because, I mean, some people have just crazy memories and they can do all that. But if you don't have that and it's been a few years, you can have all those notes there. And then when you do re-engage with them, oh, how was your trip to Cape Cod four years ago or whatever, or six months ago? So you have something to kind of kick off from and it's not so awkward. Yeah. Yeah. And for those who are listening who are founders, for example, you probably have a CRM where you can have this information in there. I have an air table where I keep meticulous track of everybody I reach out to so I know the percentages that I need to hit my sales goals. Those are just some easy yeah. ways you can gather data around it too. So you're suggesting that first contact should be just soft, asking a question about something that's happened recently? Yeah, I think I this is like my life philosophy. I feel like it's easier to care about people than it is to ask for things. Agreed. It's so much easier to serve too. Like I'm offering you this thing rather than asking for something because I have, I cannot. Yeah. Every person, you, me, everyone listening has something cool that they know a lot about that could help a lot of people. So thinking about it that way, I feel like for me, you know, I do a lot of recruiting. I do a lot of interview preparation. I know how to do job interviewing. I interview thousands of people a year. I mean, I know how to do those things. So if there's someone who says, oh, I'm struggling with my interviews, I'm like, I can help you immediately. I'm like, I can think about that. or if you say, hey, I want to meet someone in this field. I talk to those people all the time. Oh, I know someone. So it's just thinking about what you can give rather than what you can get. But I do think the soft approach of how's your family? What's going on with you? Oh, great. Oh, you work here now. Oh, I didn't know I got a new job. What made you make the make the move? Or why did you decide to start your own business? Or what gaps are you seeing in the market? What's the hardest thing about your about your business today? Anything like that. Just really natural, organic questions. Yeah. It's just showing a genuine interest in their lives. So novel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so novel. I know. But I find that I get to the best conversations. I mean, with you too. You know, we've had that great breakfast. We've met. We met like two years ago. And yeah. it's just, we don't all the time, but I feel like I know a lot about you and your life and what you're looking for. You know, and I feel like you know that about me too. And you raise the vibration, you raise the quality of your relationships when you leave the, you know, automated questions behind and you just start talking to people. Hey friends, we're going to take a quick pause to hear from my friends at Lead Feeder. Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs and B2B marketers. Before we dive back into the conversation, let me introduce you to a game changer in the lead generation arena, Lead Feeder. Now, we all know the struggle of identifying those elusive website visitors and turning them into valuable leads. But what if I told you there's a tool that not only promises, but delivers on supercharging your lead generation and sales efforts? Enter Lead Feeder. Imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website, track their behavior in real time, and seamlessly integrate it all with your CRM. Lead Feeder is not just a tool, it's your secret weapon for efficient and targeted lead engagement. What sets Lead Feeder apart? It's the ability to provide detailed insights into visitor behavior, helping your sales team prioritize efforts and close deals faster. 
with customizable notifications, lead scoring, and GDPR compliance. Lead Feeder is changing the game. Ready to revolutionize your approach to leads and deals? Head over to leadfeeder.com for your free demo today. That's L-E-A-D-F-E-E-D-E-R.com. Don't miss out on the future of successful lead generation with Lead Feeder. Yeah. So when you say leaving the automated questions behind, that makes me think of scripting your conversations. You think more in the terms of prompts. Can you give me some examples of prompts that might make it easier for someone where it just doesn't come that naturally? Yeah. And I know that this is awkward for people, but, you know, we're going to flip the script and we're going to say it's not awkward, that you're super interesting. You have a lot to offer. And I think yes or no questions are let's put those on the back burner for a while. Let's think about open ended questions that give people a lot of breath to answer. So when you're at an event in person, let's say. You could say something like, oh, how did you hear about this event? Or where's the last place you traveled? If they say something about traveling or just, you know, whatever the event is about, ask a question about, oh, okay, if this is about a entrepreneur, like, tell me about your business. Oh, okay, you're an entrepreneur. What, why did you, why did you decide to start that? Or what's your favorite way to spend your time when you're not working on your business? So all of these questions are not yes or no, and they give you a lot of room for people to expand their answers. And then you can ask more questions off of that. So it's just kind of like you get you ask one question, but then you get information to ask three more. So you can it can really jump it off and get to know people quickly. Yeah. And that is something that I mentioned before we hit record. I do all the time in podcasting or when I'm interviewing my clients to help them with their content creation. It's I prompt them with something and then it spurs into the next thing. These podcasts aren't scripted in the slightest bit. I just have like three prompts and everything else just fills in. And a lot of times you probably get something that you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. All the or time. I had never. Yeah. Because you have these open ended questions, it just raises the quality. Yes. So we have how to re-engage our, the people that have been in our lives before that we haven't talked to in a while in a more comfortable way and some prompts if we're starting to have those conversations at either networking events or connection calls when we're re-engaging that audience. But now mm-hmm. let's talk about the after. In the after, yeah. how do you maintain those relationships and make sure that they don't fall away again? Yeah. So if it's been a couple of years since you talked to somebody, a lot of times, too, and we can get to this, but if they post a lot on LinkedIn or whatever platform that you are going to connect with them on, maybe Slack or YouTube, I don't know how you know everybody, but I do a lot on LinkedIn. So I would probably message someone on LinkedIn, especially if I worked with them two years ago. I might not have their work email. We don't work at the same place anymore. I don't know how to contact them. So I would go, if it's virtual, I would go on LinkedIn. And I would just say, hey, you know, I noticed that you're still at X company. How's it been going for you? I'd love for us to catch up and really stating your intentions. Like don't without asking for things. So just saying, I'd love for us to catch up. I I miss talking to you. I love when we work together. Um, You have some what's your availability over the next couple of weeks to just grab a coffee or just grab a call and not saying, are you available? What's your availability? Yeah. Again, not a yes or no question. And yeah. it's casual. It's no pressure. Yeah. And sometimes people won't answer you. You might get people that don't check their LinkedIn or you might get people who maybe they are not in the mood to network or they're nervous like you. And so they might not answer you. You might not get 100 percent response rate. But a lot of times you get people if you really knew them, you know, they would say, hey, oh, my gosh, Sarah, it's been years. I can't, I would love to. How about next Friday? Are you available? Are you in town? Or we can just grab a virtual coffee. So I think just saying things like, what's your availability? How's it been going since X, Y, Z thing? Have you, if you know them through, we know, Sarah and I know each other through the AMA. So how's, have you been attending a lot of these AMA events lately? How's that been going? Things like that. So however you've met them, Make sure to drop that in case they forgot, you know, to remind them who you are and how you know them. And yeah, just no yes or no questions and just keep it super casual. Yeah, that is a really good point, too, in that when 
like my success rate reaching out to people on LinkedIn versus email is so much higher. If I had my Airtable up, I could tell you the exact percentage. But (laughs) it's just more casual slipping into the DMs and having a conversation. And I think that people are more protective of their email and feeling like it's down to business. (laughs) And uh, I'm just always reaching for that zero inbox. So I'm deleting a lot of emails that probably matter, but it's unattainable inbox zero. I'm always trying to get there too. And yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think people just kind of gloss over their emails sometimes with LinkedIn, they see it. And another thing you can do is if someone on your list that you made of 50 people or however many, if they post on LinkedIn a lot, maybe you could write something on their posts, you know, yeah. if they comment a cool initiative they're doing or you see them say something, you can say, oh, my gosh, that's so funny. And then message them privately and be like, hey, I saw your post about X, Y, Z. It made me think of you. How are you doing? How's it been going since X, Y, Z meeting time? I'd love for us to catch up. What's your availability over the next couple of weeks? That is a great way to do even a, a softer touch is start re-engaging <laughs> with their in the comments. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Actually, that happened to me last week where someone who was the content director when I was just when I was freelance writing, she was a content director mm-hmm. for the company. And I noticed that she kept commenting on my LinkedIn posts. I'm like, we haven't like I didn't. She was so high above me that I only saw her CC'd on emails to me. <laughs> but I was like, I haven't interacted with her in ages. I wonder what she's up to. And we're we, we're setting up a call to reconnect. But that's exactly how it happened. These are how it's just, I think in general, we talk about networking after the fact or in the moment. I think you have to just lead with caring about people. I have so many examples. I, we do not have enough time in the day for me to give you specific examples that I remember. And there's probably other ones that I forgot because, you know, I haven't slept in years. I've got two kids under five. <laughs> but I can tell you, I walked up to the, someone, this is, this is a good one, I think, because I was at an event and it was actually out in Las Vegas and we live in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And I was I told you I'm a marketing recruiter. And this person who was leading a panel, also a marketing recruiter, lived in Chicago, owned her own business. And I was like, what? We're so parallel lives. How is it that we don't know each other? So I just walked up to her and I was like, hey, I, I mean, I just kind of said what I said, you know, you work in marketing recruiting. So do I. How do we not know each other? I'd just love to meet you. And she said, hey, are you interviewing for jobs? And I said, no. And she's like, well, here's my card. Why don't you come by the office next week? And I ended up working for her. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I didn't even ask for a job. I wasn't even looking for a job. But that's how it goes. Yeah, it really is. When thinking back, because I think we're similar ages. So I've also been in the workforce for about 15 years. Looking back, every single job that I have gotten and most that my friends have gotten were from people I knew. I was like, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. I know someone who is looking for that that kind of role. Let me let me connect you guys. Yeah, and there was some TED Talk. You could probably find it. I don't know if you want to put it in the show mm-hmm. notes. I'll, maybe I can find it for you. But it was like the main things that happen in your life, your main life events. So whether that's getting married, getting a job, anything that's a primary turning point in your life, it's all facilitated by third party or third level connections. So, you know, your first connection is like your brother and sister. Second is like your friend. And then third is someone you barely know. And it's so true. I mean, I got that job from a person I barely knew at that time. And think about all the people that you know. Oh, let me just connect you guys. And then it's like before you know it, you got a job there or you're working together. Yeah, that's so interesting. I'm going to look for it. Yeah, I'm trying your third. Yeah. I'm thinking of like uh, how I met my husband. My mm-hmm. best friend was cousins with his best friend and we ended up at the same party. Third connection. Huh? See, yeah. Now everyone listening is thinking about this. They're like, how did I meet this person or how did I get that job? It's your third connection, most likely. Unless some people have been married since like the third grade. I don't know. But <laughs> most of the time is third level connections. Uh, 
Before we wrap up, I really I wanted to touch on a couple other ways that I stay connected to people after I meet them. Um, some other options, like for events that I've gone to, we created group texts where we would yep. we would find where to meet up during the event. So we just kept that group text going from the event. Um, another one is <clears throat> oh, what was it? Oh. I set a boomerang on my Gmail every 90 days to reconnect so I don't forget. (laughs) That's a great idea. And you can have this spreadsheet if you're, you know, less tech like me. I'm like, I I look at like spreadsheets or I could set up boomerangs. That's a good idea. But I have a a spreadsheet of like the last time I talked to someone, if it's been 90 days or 60 days, I'm like, oh, you can just you can refer to that, too. Yeah. And that's the other thing when people at events like AMA or some kind of organization that has Slack. You know, you can keep up with people and ask, hey, are you coming to the next meeting or the next, you know, event? Hey, I'll be there in two weeks. OK, great. You know, I'll see you there. And it's so easy to just ask people if they're going. Oh, that's a really good point. If there's a community attached to the event, even better. Yeah. Yeah. I have found that communities and then attending those events are the mm-hmm. most profitable way for me to spend my time. They so often turn into work from third party yeah. connections. People are like, oh, a client actually needs this. Let me connect you to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of it's timing. And I think overall, the main point is just to be open and not necessarily feel so desperate. Like, oh, my gosh, I have to talk to five yeah. people this week or oh. Don't put a panic on it. Just say, hey, I love this as a goal. I'm going to try it out. Let's do five people a week. Let's just see what happens. And then once they say, you know, you've reached out to them on LinkedIn or whatever platform, then they say, hey, let's meet. Then you can ask a lot more open ended questions. How's it been going? I'd love to. I'm so glad we could catch up today. So what have you been doing the last few months? And then they'll give you things. And if you are looking for a job or you are looking for new business, you can say my favorite four words when networking. Keep me in mind. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot you told me that. Can you just touch on that? <laughs> All right. I was wrapping up and now I'm not. Can you just touch on that keep on my, keep me in mind thing? Yes. So, you know, I, like I said, it's way easier to care about people than to ask for things. Keep me in mind is just, hey, I'm open to it, but I'm not asking and I'm not going to force you to say yes or no to me right now. So I have a like that funny story I have is um, so David Schwimmer, he played Ross on Friends. And if you all watch the if you know the show Friends, of course, but if you watch the reunion, he talked about it and he said, I interviewed with the creators of Friends, obviously not at that time. But he said 10 years ago, I met with those people and I did a casting call and it wasn't the right show at that point because it was, you know, 1984, like before Friends started. And he said, you know, it wasn't the right thing and they didn't pick me, but we liked each other. We just had this kinship. And so I left the audition after they told me no. But I said, keep me in mind for something else. Cut to 10 years later, they're casting friends and David Schwimmer is the first person they cast because they met him 10 years ago. And it was like, you know, it didn't work that it didn't work out 10 years ago. But he said, keep me in mind. And they remembered and he remembered. And then the rest is history. That is so brilliant. And you really just wiggle wormed into my brain with that because I have started saying, keep me in mind. And it does, it has circled back already just since we had that conversation. Yes. And it's not so, you know, you don't want to, I never like asking. for. It's so hard to ask for things. And if you don't, you just, it might not even be the right time. So it's like, Mm -hmm. hey, keep me in mind when the time's right, it'll work. Yes. Yes. So now for reals. Before we wrap up, um, I just wanted to touch on our workshop. We are, hold on, pause, pause, pause. I am pulling it up. Here it is, April 23rd at 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm more of the MC. You're the expert on it. But Jenna and I are going to be hosting a workshop called Five Ways to Network Without Being Awkward. And Do you want to touch on some of the things that we'll be digging into? Yes. So we'll get into some more specifics. I feel like we touched on some points, but whenever I hear workshop, I hope you're coming to work because that's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to go very specific questions on like how to at which questions to ask that are not yes or no questions. And we're going to have you do that and put it into practice immediately and see how you feel when you're doing it. And then two, 
just this point about when you're networking, I think we always think, oh, who do I ask? But it's like, how can you serve first? How can you say, what can I give people? And when you lead with that generosity, it is kind of subconscious that people want to give it back to you. Mm -hmm. So how can you about your unique skills, crafting your elevator pitch? Like, what are you really good at? How could you help people? And then go out to your networking conversations with those things in mind. Yes, 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 yes. And I just want to touch on how beneficial networking can really be. My Q4 of last year was horrendous. I mean, December usually sucks. But I spent that entire month networking. I was like, I'm going to go all in. And I networked a ton. And then by January, I was booked out through May. It really, mm -hmm. really helps. And I'm, I was using these same tactics that Jenna taught today. <laughs> I'm glad that you are showing that these things work because sometimes it's hard to show it. You're like, oh, I could never do that. And it's like, yes, you can. And the results can just multiply and transform your business and your life. And it changes how you feel about yourself, too. Yeah, it does. And my mindset really shifted because I did feel uncomfortable for a long time about it. And then I started going into those conversations with gives already prepared. Like I did my research and I was like, I know a few people that I think could be really beneficial to that person. I'm going to do mm -hmm. have those intros ready to go or I'd love to collaborate with that person. I just knew what my gives would be ahead of time. And then as the conversation progressed, I'd see which one of those gives that I had pre thought about would actually work. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to leave those conversations when you're reengaging your network is just at the very end say, oh, my gosh, it was so great connecting with you you know, I am, we were talking about this thing. I'm going to introduce you to that person. I'll send an email intro. I'll set it up. And then it's like, you leave, you ask for the conversation, but you're leaving, giving them something. So they feel like it was worth their time too. Yes, absolutely. And when I'm like really crossing my fingers that I don't fall out with this person, like we just, you know, f drift off away from each other. I always have a second ask prepared. Like what's a way that I can set up a re-engagement in a way with that. So mm -hmm. we can, I can make sure to maintain that relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So Jenna, where can people find you online and um, connect with you? Yes. So you can find me on LinkedIn. My name is Jenna Kimball. And I also have a website if you want to look there. It's www.jennakimball.com. And I have my I did write a book actually about how to interview, um, how to ace your job interview. So you can find it there or you can find it on Amazon. But yeah, just connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you. And that is that. That was my conversation with Jenna. Make sure to head on over to the show notes and there's a clickable link to sign up for that workshop. You can join us live or you can get the replay afterwards if you just want to grab the quick tips and tricks that she'll be teaching you. Um, live, though, we'll be doing some actual work <laughs> and practicing what it's like to network and how to come up with those prompts and how to feel more comfortable with networking. So it should be a great experience for everybody. If you liked this episode, please rate, review, subscribe wherever you're listening to this and um, head over to LinkedIn follow Jenna. She's amazing. And that's also my primary social media channel. So if you want to be friends over there, join me. It's just linkedin.com slash IN slash Sarah Noel Block. All right. I will not really see you since this is a podcast, but you will be hearing from me again next week <laughs> where we will continue this series and it'll all culminate with that workshop on the 23rd. So the 21st, we're dropping another episode on networking. The 23rd, we're having that live workshop. Sign up. You'll get the replay if you can't show up live. Either way, love you. Love your show. First time caller. Long time listener. <laughs> Bye.